couple weeks ago I got a new coffee brewer. I've been brewing some of the best coffee that I've had in years and finding out a lot about this way of coffee brewing called no bypass brewing. What is it? Let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm and I'm with Home Grounds. And before I jump into the video, I'm just gonna make a small little ask. If you are new around here, if you like coffee content, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, hitting the notification bell, liking this video, all those things are really small, but they help out our channel greatly, being able to make these videos, create more and more coffee content for you to enjoy. So moving on, let's talk about no bypass coffee brewing. If you are unfamiliar with what no bypass brewing is, let's give a quick rundown. So let's say you're brewing coffee, you're using something like a Hario V60 and you pour over any batch brewer. Usually how you are making this is you are pouring hot water over a bed of coffee grounds. The water is traveling through and extracting soluble material out of those coffee grounds, dripping through a filter, ending up in your cup. Now one thing that is happening when you're making coffee this way, and it's not a downside, it's just sort of a side effect, is that you have water traveling around the coffee bed, around the filter, and not traveling all the way through the coffee. So that water is called bypass. It is bypassing the brew bed. Now in the last couple years or so, people have started to experiment with, well, what if there was no bypass? What if all of the water had to pass through the coffee bed. And there we get some newer brewers on the market. This is the next level brewer, and how it works is you have this straight-sided, cylindrical brewer. At the bottom of this brewer, you have a plate of sorts, and that you set your filter and your coffee grounds on. And then when water is going over that, there's no way for the water to travel around the coffee bed. And another benefit to these types of brewers is they usually have something like this on the top. This is a dispersion screen of sorts. Basically, it's just a way for you to evenly distribute water amongst those grounds and not have it introduce too much agitation, which leads to channeling. Because one big problem with, say, pour overs like this is if you pour really hard in one spot, you're going to create a channel and that water is going to travel quickly through there and not hit the rest of the bed. So something like this solves that problem by pouring all of your water over here and these small little holes are going to disperse the water evenly amongst the grounds. This isn't something that is special to no bypass brewing. There are things out there like the Mellow Drip or Haru even has their own sort of drip assist device, which are meant to do those same things. But all that to say, no bypass brewers utilize these in order to get you a more even dispersion of water. So what are some benefits to brewing coffee this way? One of the main ones is that we are removing a variable of unpredictability with bypass brewing because you can't really control how much water in a V60 is traveling around the sides and not going through the coffee bed. We're kind of just hoping that it's fairly consistent from brew to brew so that you know how to adjust. Versus in something like this, we're just eliminating that inconsistency completely. Another benefit is that with these brewers, we are able to extract more out of our coffee and extract more evenly. And that means that where you would usually use a 1 to 16 ratio in a bypass brewer like the V60, in something like this we can experiment with 1 to 20, 1 to 22 ratios. So that means you can use less coffee grounds to get the same amounts of brewed coffee at the end. And that's really great if say you are getting something like this. This is from one of my favorite roasters, Luminous Coffee. I recently ordered this shirt from them. They aren't sponsoring, I bought all this myself. But when I bought this shirt, they sent me this little sample of coffee beans. There's only 50 grams in here though. And so in order to get the most out of this little sample, I can brew, say, five cups using 10 grams of water and get a lot more brewed coffee out of it than if I were to brew this using a bypass brewer. So I've been talking a lot about 
numbers and efficiency, but do these actually make a better tasting cup of coffee? And I would say that it depends on the coffee you're using, but a lot of times I'm able to get what I perceive as a sweeter, more balanced cup of coffee out of these brewers. More sweet just because of the extraction yields, but more balanced because we are evenly saturating all the coffee grounds and that really allows you to not over and under extract certain parts of your coffee bed. You're extracting everything really evenly. Now we've been talking a lot about the benefits of brewers like this. Are there any downsides? Well, of course. One thing is that, well, it's another coffee brewer you have to buy. And some of us might have a few dozen coffee brewers lying around and you need to stop. That is a downside. Another downside is that these brewers usually take a little bit longer. I would say they can take anywhere from five to eight, maybe even 10 minutes. Still getting a great cup of coffee, but you have to factor in that time. If say you're looking at these for a cafe setting, sure, there is a lot less hands-on work. You can just kind of pour in all your water and then let it draw down for a while but you have to factor in that time and that may not be worth it for you. Now let's move on and talk about some of the methods that I've at least seen or been able to play around with with no bypass brewing. And obviously the first one is this no bypass brewer. This is not sponsored. I went and purchased this from their website because I was interested in it and I've been really enjoying it. This brewer costs $49 before shipping. It comes in both black and white and there's a few reasons I like this one. First off, the larger diameter of this brewing area makes it great for larger brews. I mean, that's also a downside because I would say the least amount you can brew with this brewer is 20 grams of coffee. Any lower than that and your bed will just be too shallow and it won't really work. But you can brew between 20 and they say even up to 50 grams of coffee and get great results. So it's a pretty good brewer if you're brewing for multiple people. Another good thing about this brewer is I think this version is built pretty well. All these parts are like really well thought out, being able to take off the bottom here. It's easy to clean. I haven't had any issues there. Downsides of this brewer in particular, like I said earlier, not good for smaller batches. You also need special filters for this, obviously, unless you are cutting up your own, which I wouldn't really recommend. I guess you can in a pinch, but they do have their own custom filters. It comes with a hundred with the brewer and you can buy a hundred more on their website for I think $8 and 50 cents. So not the cheapest filters, but we'll see cheaper than some of the other options for no bypass brewing. Lastly, I mean, it's $50. It's a little on the higher end for a manual coffee brewer, but I would say for this, you are getting what you pay for. So I've had really great experiences with the next level brewer, but what are some other options? Now the other probably even more popular option for no bypass specific brewers is called the Tricklet. It is slightly smaller than the next level brewer. So it's great for between I'd say like 10 and 20 grams of coffee, at least from what I've been reading online. And it's had a lot more popularity, meaning that there are a lot more people out there with advice on how to use it versus there aren't a whole lot with the next level brewer. So there's a lot of experimentation on your own. Now the only reason that I really didn't buy the Tricklet is because it's $71, which is quite a lot of money and I could save a lot by just getting the next level brewer. And then also it does come with filters, but if you wanna buy more, it is $17 for 100, which is pretty expensive for a pack of filters. Now, if you've been thinking during this whole video, I feel like I've seen some brewers already out there that maybe aren't meant to be no bypass brewers, but kind of look like it. Well, you are correct. So first, let's look at the good old AeroPress. Yeah, the AeroPress has straight sides, a flat bottom. It looks like it would be a great no bypass brewer and it definitely has potential to be. You know, I think that these are great because I would say most people that are really interested in coffee that are looking to try out new brewing methods, they probably already have an AeroPress, 
So that is already a plus. You maybe don't have to spend more money. Plus they're only like 30 to 35 dollars nowadays. But then another benefit is obviously the AeroPress is probably the most versatile coffee brewer out there. So you're not just paying for only no bypass brewing. Now there is one thing preventing this from being a no bypass brewer right out of the box, and that is your water dispersion. There's no way standard to have your water saturated evenly and not produce too much agitation on your coffee bed. But there are a few ways to do this with the AeroPress. The first is if you have a second AeroPress for some reason, you can just do that. You can pour water right over there. It'll disperse it nicely. Another option is to use what's called the Mellow Drip. Uh, you can buy one of those, but that is like the same price as a AeroPress. So I don't know if that's really worth it to use just for this method. But one way that I've been using that I've been really enjoying is with an espresso basket. If you happen to have an espresso machine, you probably have an extra one or two of these lying around and they work great. This is one from the Breville Barista Express. So this is a 54 millimeter basket and fits right in there. It works great. It allows water to drip down fairly slowly and doesn't disturb the bed too much. Produces a nice even extraction. I like it. You can also use a 58 millimeter. It just won't sit as nicely in there. Just have to make sure it's nice and level, but they work just as well. Another thing I've read a lot about with no bypass brewers is people talking about how there are already brewers out there doing this. They just weren't seen as no bypass brewers. And one of those is the Vietnamese fin. You can see this is a straight walled flat bottom brewer. It even has a, he got a little camera shy. Anyways, it even has a built in sort of dispersion screen, although this is meant to sit on the coffee bed. You can also just kind of like hold it up there, I guess. Uh, but another benefit to these is that, look at that, an AeroPress filter fits right in there. So I've been playing around a lot with this and the AeroPress and I really love using them as no bypass brewers. And these are super cheap. You might already have one lying around. If not, you can find one easily at a thrift store, antique store, or just buy a brand new one for like 10 bucks. And they work great if, say you wanna play around with no bypass brewing, see if it's something you're interested in without spending a whole lot of money on a brand new expensive brewer. So that is everything that I know and have learned about no bypass brewing. And I'm gonna open up the end of this video by just starting a conversation. I am genuinely curious what people think of this way of brewing coffee. Is it as revolutionary as a lot of people are making it out to be? Is it not that big of a deal? Do you think it's overrated or people aren't paying enough attention to it? I wanna hear your thoughts. If you want, please leave some comments down below. Let's start a conversation. I am still exploring this brewing method a lot, learning a lot about it. It intrigues me, but maybe other people don't see the same things in that, and that's great. Let's talk about it. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video on no bypass brewing. And until next time, happy brewing.